It's um, Prazogrel versus Clopidogrel for ACS patients managed without revascularization, the Trilogy ACS study. Thank you very much. Um, I, as I uh, presenting this to this is the slide showing the disclosures at the bottom of the slide. The manuscript is appearing as we speak at the New England Journal of Medicine webpage. The full disclosures are there. The pe presentation is going to be made by Matt Rowe at this session. I want to emphasize that this is a trial of medically managed, without revascularization, ACS patients. Only 7.5% of our patients uh, had revascularization during the 30-month follow-up period. That is compared to about 40 to 60% in other contemporary ACS trials. So this trial is very different. We enrolled over 9,000 patients, and we had a sequential testing strategy where we examined the first cohort, those under 75, um, as a first strategy. The majority, as shown on the right-hand side of this slide, actually were patients who were already on clopidogrel and then were randomized after they were on clopidogrel to continue either on clopidogrel or go on to prasugrel. We made one dose adjustment in this trial, and that was reduce the dose, maintenance dose of 5 milligrams for patients under 60 kilos and those in the elderly. We also uh, excluded patients with TIA and stroke. As you see here, the majority of patients were on <coughs> clopidogrel. Only 4% were de novo patients receiving the doses shown here. Here are the primary results of the uh, clinical trial up to uh, 30 months. As you will see, this is a 2% absolute difference, which is not significant um, by uh, statistical uh, testing. You see the hazard ratios and the p-value associated. There was a surprising and novel change in the curves at about one year, and you can see the interaction p-value, borderline significance, and hazard ratio less than one uh, at uh, or beyond one year in the study. This finding was consistent in all the components of the uh, endpoints, death, MI, and strokes as seen here. And actually, if you look at the hazard ratios for all those components, they're also all less than one after one year. In this trial, because it's a chronic disease model, we used an alternative method for also examining the primary endpoint and particularly ex examining ischemic multiple events, so death, MI. Of course, you can't have multiple deaths, but you can have multiple MIs and multiple strokes. And you see the findings here that in this setting, using multiple events analysis, the anderson gill model, the trial is normally positive with a p-value of 0.04. And the same interaction that we saw with late findings, that is beyond a year, is also shown here. And the numbers are shown below that actually defines exactly how many events. One patient had up to seven events during the 30 period. On the downside or bleeding side, you can see here, first gust of bleeding, no increase in severe or life-threatening bleed. When you add moderate bleed, you get a trend towards higher bleeding, but not significant. And when you look at the TIMI classification shown here, you can see, once again, for major life-threatening fatal or intracranial hemorrhage, there is no statistical significant increase. But when you add minor bleeding, you can see an increased rate of bleeding. In this trial, we also examined the total population. We were not allowed to test it uh, by our strategy. But just for completeness sake here, you will see the all-cause death bleeding events in the total trial, including those over 75 with the lower dose of and you can see there's no signal here for increasing rate of bleeding. We did examine adjudicated neoplasm in this trial because questions had been raised in a prior trial, and you can see there's no signal here. So our conclusions are, in this largest trial to date of ACS patients managed medically without revascularization, Prasugrel was not statistically different from clopidogrel during a 2.5 years follow-up among patients under 75. Further analysis of the primary endpoint yielded several important findings favoring Prasugrel. Trend for time-dependent benefit after a year, fewer total recurrent ischemic events, particularly after one year, and no statistical difference in the major life-threatening fatal bleeding or uh, differences in new benign uh, neoplasm. And the article just appeared this morning. And I want to apologize. I learned uh, myself that Forbes uh, released 
the press release, presumably getting time zones of the world mixed up, which is surprising, but uh, that's what happened. Thank you. Thank you.